Uh, hello and welcome to this uh, podcast about the November 2019 meeting of the International Accounting Standard Board about uh, the amendment to IFRS 17 project. So, my name is Roberta Ravelli and I am a member of the technical staff. With me today, uh, Darrell Scott and Nick Anderson, members of the board. So, at the November meeting, uh, the board discussed a summary of the figure from the uh, 122 comment letters uh, that the board received in response to the exposure draft. Uh, and this summary supplemented the summary of the feedback from outreach that the board uh, discussed last month. Um, the feedback from the comment letter and the feedback from the um, outreach is consistent and show overall support for the proposal in, in the exposure draft. Um, however, most respondent and participant to the outreach also commented on other areas of IFRS 17 and uh, uh, express the view that uh, the board might consider to extend the scope of some of the proposal. So investors in particular engage in this process of providing feedback to the, to the board, particularly during outreach and, view, and um, with a few comment letters. So Nick, what can you tell us about the investor views on the implementation of IFRS 17? Uh, so, so investors remain very engaged on this subject and as you said we've undertaken further outreach during this process and we've received some comment letters um, and, and investors have looked at the proposed amendments, they feel clearly that some of those are helpful in better explaining the performance of insurers going forward. But I'd say the overriding message is actually now it is time to get on and implement the new requirements. Um, there's a sense that the lack of transparency around financial reporting uh, for insurance activities today is hindering capital markets. It is uh, uh, meaning some investors actually unable to analyse the sector on a fundamental basis and indeed I know that generalist investors or some generalist investors have decided not to invest in the sector at all. And that, So I, I think the message is that we don't need to, to actually get to a, per a perfect answer here, that actually this is such a step change from the current requirements that actually now is time to get on and if we need to circle back with a post-implementation review, which we would do in a, a number of years after the standards become effective, that is the right approach. Um, so I say that's a consistent message and indeed, although this wasn't on our CMAC agenda for our, the meeting CMAC had in October, it was raised at that meeting. Uh, we were asked to give a general update on the state of play with IFRS 17. And again, a very consistent message. Indeed, one of our members identified as being probably the most important thing the board has done for several years in terms of creating a level playing field for financial reporting across the sector. Uh, and, and he sought to differentiate between, yes, there are costs through implementation, but there's a cost to the economy, and he used the word the community, by not having this level playing field. Um, uh, and I think, again, it reflects the view um, that by not being able to invest in the sector, there is a cost of capital impact. And I say that's been reflected through comment letters more generally and, and the outreach. So overall, please... Great work that's happening, but actually now is the time to get on and actually we want to see the benefit of all the work that's being done here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nick. So in, in the light of this feedback from the outreach and the comment letters, at the November 2019 meetings, the, the board decided on which topics it need to consider further because, uh, before uh, it can decide whether to confirm or otherwise amend the proposal in the exposure draft. So, Darrell, what can you tell us about the board discussion itself at the November meeting? Thanks, Roberta. So I think, as you mentioned earlier, we got... Um, fairly consistent report or feedback through the outreach process and the and the comment letters and that, that's given us a solid foundation to move the discussion forward. I think the board acknowledged and staff in particular acknowledged during the course of the meeting that we are very aware that people are in the process of doing implementation, the work is ongoing as we sit in our meetings and speak and that means that the sooner we can give certainty about the process forward the more useful it's going to be for those implementation processes. When we started out in this um, amendment um, a project plan, one of the things we said is we want to interfere as little as possible with the implementation process and so we think this is really important. I think it's also important, um, Nick mentioned costs and I think we're, we're very aware that the longer this process drags on, the more costs will be 
um, added on. And so we think it's important that we can move this process quite quickly. So what the staff did was that they brought us, as you mentioned, the summary of the, of the comment letters, and then they broke that summary down into essentially three categories. Those three categories were the categories in which, at the first instance, uh, staff believed that the comment letters and outreach largely supported the proposals in the exposure draft and that there was nothing further that the board really needed to do. There was no, no work would necessarily change in, in, to any great extent what the proposals were. And the staff asked us to confirm that those particular topics, the staff will bring back a paper asking us to agree that what was in the exposure draft can be carried forward into the final standard. Some, some energetic discussion, I think, and I think it was a good discussion to have had, but the, star, the board did agree with the staff recommendation in regard to those particular topics. The second category that the staff brought back were topics in which we made proposals in the exposure draft, and people responded to those uh, topics, typically agreeing with what we had proposed, but wanting us to go a little bit further. And the staff were proposing that on those particular topics they'd bring back some additional considerations, they would summarise what we had heard, and they would consider whether or not to propose a change to the um, original proposals that we had made. Um, there were also a couple of additional topics in that category, and these were topics where we hadn't proposed making changes in the ED, but nonetheless people felt that we should try and do something. And the staff had identified, I think it was four topics that they believed would be important for us to consider in addition, um, just to make sure we are giving proper respect to the, the comments we received, and in particular, I think, because some of the topics raised issues that perhaps we hadn't necessarily fully discussed in the, in the first round. And again, what the staff were asking the board to do was to agree that on those particular topics, we'd get a more detailed analysis to consider at a, at a future meeting. I think both the board and the staff emphasized that on those particular topics, just the fact that they were coming back didn't necessarily imply that we would make a further change. I think it was simply to make sure that we had properly considered the, the feedback that we had received. To say again, the board agreed on those particular topics, so those we will see come through in the next couple of months for further consideration. The final category, if you like, were issues that were raised in some of the comment letters or outreach, where the board had either previously fully discussed the topic, or where people were bringing additional things to the table, but we didn't believe merited a further discussion. And so the staff were essentially asking the board to agree that although these topics had been brought up, either because they were repeated topics or because they didn't satisfy the original criteria that we had set ourselves in going through this proposal, that we wouldn't be further discussing these during the, the re-deliberations process. And again, I think it's fair to say some energetic discussion around the table. I think there was a lot of uh, walking through the details of some of the particular topics. But in the, in the end, the board was comfortable to confirm that those particular topics don't need to come back for further consideration. Okay, perfect. So in terms of uh, next steps following this uh, uh, November board meeting, we expect the staff will bring uh, additional uh, papers uh, on the categories of topics that you mentioned. That's right. I think, I think we, we'll probably have some additional papers that will come on Category 1, simply because the board needs to go through the due process of actually confirming that we will be making those proposed changes to, um, uh, to the final standard. We'll also be bringing back the or staff will also be bringing back the additional papers on the category two topics, which do the, the further in depth analysis, and the staff propose that they'll do this over the next three months, so the December through to February meetings, and we would hope then to complete the process, uh, run about February next year, with a view to then going through our own balloting and, and underlying uh, due process steps, uh, with a view to trying to publish something by mid next year. Perfect. Thank you, Nick and uh, Davel, for this uh, summary of the recent uh, discussion of the, the board uh, in uh, starting a uh, deliberation on the exposure draft. Uh, so thank you uh, for listening.